A generous Lake Orion community helped ONTV go way past its goal during the 12th annual food drive benefiting Oxford Orion Fish. More than 80 golfers ventured out into the frozen tundra of downtown Lake Orion to help the Sunrise Rotary Club's fundraising efforts. Ice sculptures, warming stations, and a trolley were some of the features of the Lake Orion and Oxford Ice Fest. And one local restaurant recently celebrated its new look and new name during a ribbon cutting ceremony. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and so much more on this edition of ON TV News. Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry was severely impacted by the pandemic over the past two years, but as foot traffic begins to increase, their need for donations is greater than ever. Recently, we here at ONTV did what we could to help keep those shelves stocked for those in need. On Monday, February 7th, ONTV kicked off its week-long food drive, benefiting Oxford Orion Fish. Now in its 12th year, the food drive traditionally invited residents to come to the Orion Center to drop off food on a single Saturday, but due to the COVID pandemic, organizers focused on cash donations spread out over a week. Each day during the week, the food drive went live from noon until 2 p.m. with themed programming scheduled the rest of the day, including sports, music, and history. Prior to the start of the food drive, it was announced the goal would be $5,000. Well, it turns out ONTV severely underestimated the generosity of the Lake Orion community. Well, little did we know that the um the sponsors would come through like gangbusters for us. Uh, we had a record number 16 this year and large donations on their behalf to help sponsor uh, the food drive and to give the donations to fish. So we hit our collection goal on that Monday of $5,100 uh, already had in hand uh, before we went, in, we went even on the air for the first time. So we were really enthusiastic about, we could really blow this number open um, so we upped it to 6,500 uh, midweek at the uh, suggestion of uh, Matt Pfeiffer, uh, owner of Northern Wholesale Flooring, um, who was a sponsor. And we did that, and we surpassed that goal, I think it was on Thursday night. Uh, we were above that 6,500 goal. And at the close of the food drive Friday uh, the 11th, uh, I checked our online donations, and it was at $7,100. Uh, but as you know, online uh, online donations, they take some fees. So uh, I'd say we settled in on just about $7,000. In addition to cash donations, residents were also encouraged to fill the ONTV production truck, which was parked in the Orient Center parking lot. All of the food collected, as well as the money raised, goes directly to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry, which is dedicated to helping those in need put food on the table. I'm overwhelmed right now. I cannot believe the amount of food that is here. I didn't expect this much. It, it's really because it was supposed to just be a financial. So the, the fact that we have this much food, it's quite overwhelming. I'm sitting here thinking that I need a couple more volunteers. Yes, <laughs> it's very impressive. It just, you know, with the economy and everything that's going on right now, it's just the, the generosity of this community is just truly overwhelming. Yeah. What are uh, Fish's needs right now? Honestly, right now, anything that we can get. We, we will not say no to anything. The volume of food that is going out of the pantry right now is just astronomical with food prices right now. The clients, you know, the needs are really there between the food prices and the gas prices that, you know, the, the volume truly, and we've upped our volume of food that we're allowing our clients to take just because we know they need it. So, and we're able to meet the needs because of the generosity of this community. On the final day of the food drive, representatives of VFW Post 334 visited the studio to present a check for $1,200 to fish as part of their Adopt-A-Shelf program. And through Michelle's organization, hopefully the shelf that we sponsor, which right now is the Spaghetti, sp shelf. Sp spaghetti shelf. Yes. And uh, it's a very through, popular shelf. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It'll get us through 2022 or next in 2023. And what we want like to do is challenge other organizations out there that there's plenty of other shelves that need sponsoring at Fish. And it helps from going out and trying to get the local donations, sponsor a shelf, and then you can stock it or Fish will stock the shelf, but $1,200 a year or $100 a month. The ONTV Food Drive helps keep the food pantry shelf stocked between the holidays and the upcoming post office food drive in May. 
That food drive was canceled the past two years due to the pandemic, but the National Association of Letter Carriers is hoping to move forward in 2022, and the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive is tentatively scheduled for May 14th. To find out how you can take part, visit NALC.org. Like the food pantry, the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club does what it can to help those in need in our community. Recently, the organization hosted its largest fundraiser of the year. On the morning of Saturday, February 5th, more than 80 golfers descended on downtown Lake Orion for the 8th annual Ice Cup Challenge. Participants checked in at Wine Social before gathering near Cookies and Cream for the kickoff. The annual event acts as a fundraiser for the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club. What we do here today helps us fund all of the amazing things that we do for our community. Things like um, supporting our Oxford family through this recent tragedy, um, responding to the needs of our um, residents that lost their home in the fire, um, helping to take care of, of our um, fellow community members that are in need. Oh, I love this guy! Love the ball. Wow! 21 teams made of four people each visited nine holes set up throughout the village. Perks included snacks and drinks, a swag bag, a silent auction, and a chance to win fun prizes. The event can raise as much as $20,000 for local and international service projects. Three holes that are on the lake, uh, so we're really excited this year to have a good amount of ice and snow. Um, so we have three holes that are on the ice. Um, a hole, our longest drive hole, always a fun one, is uh, on the lawn of PNC Bank. And then we have a few holes going through our downtown businesses, like Oat Soda, Vizina Holdings, which is home to Vizina um, Law and uh, Haney Farm Bureau. Um, and this year, what is new, um, we've had local businesses sponsor each hole. So um, it helps us, to, uh, helps us with the course setup, but also really helps the participants get more familiar with the things that are available um, through businesses downtown. The Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club meets every Thursday at 7.30 a.m. at the Lake Orion United Methodist Church, located at Flint Street and Slater. For more information, search for at Lake Orion Rotary on Facebook. Yeah! While many people would rather spend winter under a nice warm comforter, the Lake Orion DDA has joined forces with the Oxford DDA to encourage residents to celebrate the season and support local businesses. On Thursday, February 10th, the Lake Orion and Oxford Ice Fest continued with the launching of a trolley service that shuttled passengers back and forth between downtown Lake Orion and Oxford. The trolley will be in operation every Thursday from 4 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from noon until 9 p.m. The two communities united to encourage residents to shop and dine at local businesses and restaurants. When Oakland County reached out to Molly and I about partnering together, um, I just thought it was the greatest opportunity. We're only three miles apart and we both have so much to offer. We both have wonderful restaurants and wonderful retail and businesses. So it was just, um, it came very natural. We were able to work with our teams very, very quickly and get along great. So this is just amazing for both communities. It's just a fun job for me to create something. Um, the kids love it. Uh, we do ice sculptures for any occasion, year round, weddings, baby showers, birthdays, uh, holiday parties, winter events. So uh, we're, we're quite busy year round. It's just an opportunity to come downtown. You know, these businesses have gone through so much and it means so much to them for us to get out and support them and they need support all year long so even though it is chilly out and I know we might not feel like always getting out I think it's really important to support them. We've got a lot of fun things planned we're going to do, be, be doing more and more things um, our Stronger Together series is proposed for the whole year so stay tuned we are going to have more. Although Ice Fest has come to an end the trolley will continue to shuttle passengers back and forth between Lake Orion and Oxford every Thursday from 4 to 9 p.m and every Saturday from noon until 9 p.m. through the month of June. And the fun will continue in March with a shopping passport contest. DDA Director Molly Lalone explains. We are working with Oxford. We have a trolley, the Downtown Trolley Express. Express, it goes between Lake Orion and Oxford every Thursday and every Saturday. 
and we have promotions that go along with that. So this month we have a passport, and just like in the holidays, um, you can come and go shopping and dining, enjoy yourself, keep those receipts, bring those receipts into either the Oxford DDA office or our DDA office, and win prizes. And the prizes will be um, downtown dollars from Lake Orion and downtown dollars from Oxford. So double your, double your money. Um, and then we also have letter boxing, and that's a treasure hunt. Um, and you can look for the uh, letter boxing lady on Facebook. She talks all about um, how to do the letter boxing. Um, we have um, treasures that you can find um, throughout town and in stores in both Lake Orion and in Oxford. And that's going through the month of, both of those promotions are through the month of uh, March. For more information, visit downtownlakeorion.org or call 248-693-9742. On Thursday, March 10th, representatives of the DDA were joined by the Chamber of Commerce and Township and Village dignitaries at a red carpet celebration marking the official grand opening of MSV Studio Fitness, located at the corner of Broadway and Front Street. The business sits right above Main Street Bicycles and under the beautiful new Dragon Mural that keeps an eye on downtown Lake Orion. It means everything to me. I hope that the awareness spreads out via this event and that we can get more awareness of, of a gym being here. It's a little bit tricky to find. So the goal here is to get to know everyone a little bit better and spread the word that MSB Studio Fitness is here and that you can sign up online for classes and get a good experience just by using our QR code, which is on our cards, and our website at msbstudiofitness.com. The building occupies the former location of the Wagon Wheel Bar, which collapsed under heavy snow in 2014 and was eventually demolished. MSB Studio Fitness opened its doors in September of 2021, offering yoga and Zumba classes as well as stationary bikes. When the weather permits, classes can be held on their rooftop patio, giving participants an impressive view of downtown Lake Orion. Lake Orion is a fantastic community to be in. I knew right away when we walked around down here and saw this vacant space that it was somewhere that we wanted to be. As you know, Main Street Bicycles was at 622 South Lapeer Road, and my husband and I took a look at the empty space and said, let's go for it. And just from being here in the community and eating at all the restaurants and the shopping, I said, why don't we open our place down here? So that's when we decided to make an offer on the building and we were lucky enough to grab it last year. It's a wonderful, wonderful community. I've enjoyed getting to know all of the DDA who does a wonderful job in keeping this place up and running. The council, the chamber, it just feels like home here. DDA Director Molly Lalone said this grand opening is yet another example of a thriving and vibrant downtown area. This is economic development at its very best. We have a busy downtown. It was worth the effort and the money to make this happen. And now we have two great buildings, great businesses that are inside this building um, that are, help, they're, they're are specifically helping the health and welfare of our downtown residents and our area residents. Um, they've got great instructors down here. Um, I'm very excited that Steve and Ann have decided to choose here for their business. For more information on classes and schedules, you can visit msbstudiofitness.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram. The Lake Orion girls basketball team just wrapped up a fantastic season, finishing with an 18-6 and record and going 9-1 and in the OAA White Division. Their record got them into the postseason, and in round one, the Dragons soundly defeated Rochester Adams 50-26. Next up, they face Stony Creek in a nail-biter, winning 32-30 to reach the district finals, where they face the Rochester Falcons. ONTV's Joey Tysick has the highlights. On March 4th, the Lake Orion girls varsity basketball team faced off against the Rochester Falcons in the district final at Lake Orion High School. Earlier in the season, the Dragons fell to the Falcons, but this Dragons team was different, as they are coming off a semifinal win against Stony Creek, who they hadn't beaten since 2009. The Dragons were looking for the title. 
In the first half, it would be a back and forth affair as the pace was a little slowed down, but both teams played tough. With the grit of the two teams, we saw plenty of fouls and free throws. The Falcons would control most of the half, but every time the Falcons got a run, the Dragons would answer back. The Falcons pushed their lead to eight midway through the second, but the Dragons clawed back and were only down 18 to 21 at the half. Coming out of halftime, the Falcons immediately went to their post-up game with the two six-foot freshmen, Alice Max and Kylie Robinson. Coach Bridges then made a savvy change defensively as the girls went to a 3-2 zone to throw off Rochester. After that, the game would get a bit sloppy as the defensive battle continued. Rochester even went to a trapping 1-3-1 to throw off the Dragons. But the slow-paced defensive game suits the Dragons all too well. It allowed them to run their plays, move the ball, and get open looks. Going to the fourth, the Dragons held a two-point lead. The Dragons were able to extend that lead to six, and just before the Dragons could make a big run, the Falcons put back their aggressive half-court trapping defense to reel the Dragons back in. However, this led to the Falcons picking up a few extra fouls, and in the closing minutes, the Dragons just needed to hit their free throws, which they did, and won the district title for the first time since 2010. Dragon Broadcasting caught up with Coach Bob Bridges and a couple of the players after the huge win. You know, our kids believed from minute one that we started this track down District Row, we knew we had to run the Rochester Gauntlet and we just believed. We worked and worked and worked. We're, we're just as talented, if not more talented, than every team we played. And, and this week, we just outworked them. I know on Monday before the game, you talked about that. How big of a role did your did your bench play in all three victories this week? Our bench was huge. We we played we played eleven kids, eleven kids tonight, eleven kids Wednesday, and on Monday we played sixteen. Every kid got in Monday. Now tonight, eleven kids played, only two seniors. So you know what that means? Nine still come back next year. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm not gonna say that. I didn't have faith in us, but we did lose to both of these teams by 20 the first time we played them. And we really showed that we could come back and push through hard work and beat these teams when it counted. As you mentioned, you lost to Rochester twice this year. You've lost to Sony once. Obviously, both of those teams were favorite against you in districts. Stoney was the favorite to win districts this year in your building. What was Bob's message to you coming in on Monday, beating three really good Rochester teams? So Bob always really preached to us that we were the most talented team on the court. And I think that our problem in recent games was we would be really close with them up until halftime and then kind of, I don't know, give up after uh, the third quarter when things got tough. And I think that this time around, we kind of just chose to persevere instead and that really made a difference. Being this the first district championship for Lake Orient since 2010, what does it mean for you to be a part of it, especially in your senior year? It's been really amazing. I've been on varsity since my sophomore year, and we've always had like pretty good years, but this is the first year that I've finally seen everything come together and all aspects kind of click. Um, so it's really, really cool to kind of get that last chance. What does it mean to be able to embrace that underdog mentality and be able to beat both of them? Uh, it just shows that nothing's impossible. We went into both games knowing that they thought they were going to blow us out and we worked hard and showed them who was boss. And what specifically about Clarkston are you going to have to watch out for them on Tuesday? Stop Maddie Skrupski. Find a way to stop Maddie Skrupski. She's an amazing ball player. She's an amazing ball player and they're a good team. She can score from anywhere and she can do whatever she wants. So we've got to find a way to stop her and we'll just play tough. That's all we can do. The Dragons will now go on to face their rival Clarkston in the first round of regionals as they look to keep the miracle alive. From Lake Orion, this is Joey Tysick reporting for ONTV Sports. Thanks, Joey. Following the win, the Dragons faced the Clarkston Wolves in the first round of regionals in Fenton, Michigan. Unfortunately, the Dragons had no answer for Maddie Skorupski, who scored 42 points to help her team knock the Dragons out of the playoffs. Although their season is over, we'd like to congratulate the Dragons for achieving something that hasn't been done in 12 years. Great job. And finally, you may have noticed that the popular Iris Cafe on Baldwin Road had closed its doors for a little over a month. But don't worry, the restaurant didn't close for good. ONTV's Joe Johnson has the story. 
On Thursday, March 3rd, representatives of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce gathered at the Orion Grill Restaurant on Baldwin Road to celebrate its new name and new look. Like this community is like all about family and that's why I love being here and all of the Chamber of Commerce and all of my friends and family being here makes me feel so welcome and that's what I'm trying to do for all of our customers and friends and family and the whole community. Sophia Kalai purchased the restaurant previously known as Iris Cafe back in November of 2020 but the COVID pandemic delayed plans to rebrand and renovate the restaurant. The new owners continued to operate as the Iris Cafe until Christmas Eve 2021. Then the doors were closed and the renovations began. On February 7th, the restaurant reopened with a brand new name and brand new look. I designed the whole thing, so I'm going to pat myself on the back. <laughs> my husband helped me out, of course, a little bit. So, And my contractor, he literally hit the nail on the head. He did amazing, and I am so happy that he did it in such a great time period, too. We were talking about maybe five to six weeks, and he did it in exactly 35 days. So I'm, I'm happy. Sophia grew up in Sterling Heights, raised her family in Rochester Hills for 15 years, and currently lives in Metamora. She told us when you visit Orion Grill, you'll be treated like family. In this business of mine, my husband is the chef in the back. My mom, that's 70 years old, she still comes and she does all the chefing for me. She, the lasagna, the noodles are like rolled out. She doesn't buy anything fake because she says that's not real. That's fake. I, I make them myself. I'm like, okay, mom. Uh, my, my son is here. He cooks. It's, it's just about all about family. And that's what we keep keep saying and keep pushing. Orion Grill is located at 3667 Baldwin Road in Orion Township. For more information, you can call 248-391-8303. You can also find them on Facebook. In Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.